It's time for round six of the Moto America AMA FIM North American Road Race Championship from Millville, New Jersey at New Jersey, New Jersey Motorsports Park. It's Moto America Superbikes at New Jersey. Beautiful shots from this part of the country, about an hour outside of the city of brotherly love. Hi, everybody. I'm Greg White, standing alongside Jason Pridmore, two-time national champion. And we're setting the stage for the super sport class, Jason, where things have been very interesting all season long. Yeah, all season long, they've been pretty good. Rich Escalante steps into the Hanos team on a new 636 Kawasaki and really has dominated the season so far. But that said, Sean Dillon Kelly's coming into this round with some momentum after winning race two at the Ridge. Now, there was a bit of controversy last time we were racing at the Ridge where well, M4X star Suzuki Sean Dylan Kelly and Brandon Posh had some words about Richie Escalante's Kawasaki Ninja ZX6R, which is a 636cc displaced motorcycle. Check this out. Motor <laughs> America hasn't said anything about a 636, so why don't they talk about it? Just say the numbers, you know? We, we keep hearing it. Uh, the bike's been in the class for five years, but it's a whole new bike this year, new chassis, new engine, new electronics, new everything, so... And, and now it's winning. <laughs> and repeat, you know, yes, the numbers are the numbers. We're on a 600, he's on a 636, but I've said, Rich is a great rider. I'm not taking anything away from him. He is using the opportunity very well, but numbers don't lie. And Motor America is, in, it, not even the commentators are at least saying, oh yeah, he's on a 636. Just make it clear so the public knows. It's a little bit strange to finish the races and everybody start to attack me, to say, hey, your bike is different. So. I think, uh, especially if you watch the races uh, in the corners, uh, I feel in me more fast, you know? I, I, I have the feeling to pass outside in the corners when you no brake and you no accelerate, so. Now, Jason, uh, you know, here's some highlights for those races, but I was able to see the data from Richie Escalante's bike at the Ridge. As we see this particular incident, race number two, where Richie got taken out. The biggest deal is, is that with all that drama that happened on Saturday, we were expecting fireworks on the racetrack, but then Richie Escalante goes down, followed by Brandon Posh, and off setting sail in the distance is Sean Dillon Kelly. Yeah, but Sean Dillon Kelly rode so superb on that Sunday, it was almost not fair that those other guys fell over because we saw him run lap times, like six or eight lap times quicker than he did his fastest on the first day. So it was almost a shame to see those two guys fall off in that race because I think SDK had something for him anyways. Yeah, he certainly did. Now I'd like to welcome in the third member of our broadcast team, Hannah Lopa. Hey, Hannah, I know you're outside enjoying the beautiful weather today. It is gorgeous out here and a big change from conditions yesterday. One rider I wanted to mention that we haven't talked about a ton this season but has made his super sport debut is Kevin Olmedo. Now Kevin is from El Salvador and actually came here to New Jersey Motorsports Park for the very first time as a spectator in 2011 to celebrate his 11th birthday. And he was so <laughs> excited to snap a picture with Josh Hayes and Josh Heron. Now, fast forward nine years later, he turns 20 tomorrow, and he is racing here in his very own race. Guys, talk about your career coming full circle. Yeah, Jason, that's actually really cool, isn't it's it? It's really neat. Yeah, and we see this a lot where guys come here as kids and then they end up coming here to the races a little bit later and they're competitors now. And Almeida is one of those kids that we've seen step up from our Junior Cup class into 600, and he's done a, a really good job. What else, Hannah? What else is going on there for Supersport? You know, Kevin did win a race here in 2018, and obviously Moto America's goal is to cultivate young riders' talent and help them move up to the bigger bikes, ultimately in the hope of Superbike and maybe even go to Europe someday. How would you say that Kevin's transition has gone so far? Well, I think it, you know, the first race of the year, he put it on the podium. He was third. Yeah. And sometimes when you have that expectation from that point on, it's a lot of pressure for a guy that's in his rookie season on a 600. So we've seen him go through his ups and downs, mostly ups, but we've had a couple of downs. Hopefully we'll see him do well today coming from that second row. And what everybody has to race is New Jersey Motorsports Park. So here's a look at it, 2.25 miles. Now, a blend of left and right-hand corners, mostly on the right side. It's been around since 2008. It's relatively flat, has a couple of elevation spots, Jason. Yeah, it is relatively flat, like you say, probably the flattest one that we have. Got some interesting places, though, when you go up over the top of the rise in turn two, down to turn three. Uh, coming onto this front straightaway is going to be really important. You see that on the bottom part of your screen. Uh, it's, a, it's actually a really fun track, shortest one that we run all season, especially in the, in the sense of lap times. So that's why the racing usually is really close here. Yeah, I can't wait to see what's in store for Supersport. And what's in store for Lucas Silva? This rider, well, 
He got his first podium in Moto America Supersport last time. He's qualified seventh, but does he have some extra speed in him? We're looking forward to find out. Today's Supersport coverage is sponsored by Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. Welcome back to New Jersey Motorsports Park. Our sixth round race number one of Supersport. Motorcycles are on their warm up lap. So we'll have a look at the starting grid, Jason. And we have Sean Dillon Kelly on pole, a 123.398. Yep, then we got Richie Escalante and Brandon Paz, kind of a familiar group there on the front row. Benjamin Smith, great job for him qualifying fourth. Kevin Almeida, Xavier Zayat, local guy. Ends up sixth. Lucas Silva, who we mentioned was on the podium last round. Nate Minster, Jarrett Nassani. Good to see Jarrett out there. Aguilar, Thermiotis, and Nolan Lampkin are rounding out row four with Blackall. Furia, Scott Briotti, and then uh, on row six, there you see Edgar Zara goes on. I think that the lap times, Greg, might even be faster this race uh, than we saw on qualifying. Remember yesterday, these guys didn't get the most quality track time they could have possibly got. The morning session was bad. The afternoon session, albeit dry, still had some streams across the track. So this morning was really the first time that they got to see the track in that qualifying session yeah and the quickest uh, try that is yeah and the quickest team to figure it out is m4x star suzuki and sean dylan kelly so now it's time to get race action underway 20 laps scheduled in this one when these lights go off we're going to turn one good drop of the hammer by the front row the front row gets up good. Brandon Posh is going to move over. It looks like he's trying to get over in front of Escalante as they move in. Sean Dillon Kelly is going to lead him through. Escalante is going to sweep across the front of Brandon Posh. Looks like Almeida also from the second row makes a good start, Greg, in fourth. So it looks like a clean start from the field. This is exactly what Sean Dillon Kelly wants to get a nice clean start and be able to pick the lines that he wants. This is where we see Richie Escalante, when he gets out front on that Honos Kawasaki, he's able to go smooth. But it's been when Richie Escalante has been following that we've seen him have a few moments. Yeah, he's got a lot better at that, I think, over the last two or three rounds. I think he's learning to control races. I think, it too, Greg, he's got a lot of confidence in his ability, knowing what he's able to do on this motorcycle and realizing that not a lot of people can just ride away from him. I think a lot of the franticness that we saw at the beginning of the year, he's really learned to control. You can see the first three guys now just starting to break away from Almeido. Brandon looked like he wanted to try to go up the inside uh, in turn seven there, but wasn't able to quite make it. But I think you're right. I think if SDK can get out front, run the laps he wants to run, and it's going to be really key to see which one of these three have their bike dialed in best when they get through this last corner. They're going to go sweeping through these S's. Now, this next right under the bridge, if you can get a good run on somebody through here, you can draft them down the straightaway. Suzuki leads a Kawasaki and a Yamaha. Who's got the legs down the straightaway? Brandon Posh in the draft. He's going to try to go by, and it looks like Posh has got the lead. No, SDK saws him off. So for lap number two, Sean Dillon Kelly wants to control the pace, Hannah. Yeah, I actually, I spoke to Sean Dillon Kelly earlier, and he said he knows that Escalante and Posh are going to be eager to make up some points after they didn't finish the race in the Ridge on Sunday, but he's just focused on riding his own race. Now, something else he pointed out to me is that because of the weather conditions, lack of laps for everyone, the three of them haven't spent much time riding with each other, so they don't really know what's going to happen during this race. Also, all three of them are running different tire combinations. Yeah, that was a big thing with Sean Dillon Kelly talking with him was he was indecisive when I spoke with him just before the race as to what tire combination they were going to run. But to add to what Hannah said as well, Jason, when you have a chance to ride around your, you know, your competitors, your, exactly, yeah, it really you kind of get a sense of where they're fast and where they're not. So this race for all three of these riders is really moment to moment in figuring things out. Yeah, this is a local race for Brandon, so I know he's going to be wanting to shine here, and he was able to double draft down that front straightaway that first lap. Brandon Posh there in second spot, and uh, and really utilized the speed of that Celtic R6 as they went down into turn one. Now, let's see if he can get a good run, but Escalante now is in the seat that he needs to be in, and Brandon gets another good run out of that last corner, looks over at his pit board. Pit board the way. These teams will communicate with their riders. Each pit board, ooh, as Posh gets in there, just a little bit bouncy as he releases the brake lever, but no dramas at all. You see for that, that battle, Greg, right behind him. Sorry, with Almeido and Xavier Zayat running uh, 
fourth and fifth, kind of not letting this three get away. In fact, Almeida looks like he's trying to close that gap and bring Zayat with him, another local guy. But Brandon, he looks like he's got a little bit of pace all down through this section. Some of that great can just be that carrot in front of you. You always feel like you're, you're, you're kind of on the back. And look at Escalante now trying to look up the inside. This is a turn five spot where we've seen some passing in the back, but really impressed right now with Almeida and Xavier Zayat kind of moving forward on these other three guys. So it's Sean Dillon, Kelly, M4X star, Suzuki leading the way from Brandon Posh, Celtic HSBK Racing on a Yamaha. So GSXR 600, the same that you can buy off the showroom floor, racing it up with the Yamaha R6. And then a couple bike lengths back is that Honos, Kawasaki, Ninja, ZX6R, Richie Escalante. Then you have another Suzuki, Altus Motorsports. That is Kevin Olmedo who has closed that gap. And then right behind him, Xavier Zayat, the number 24 on a Yamaha R6 N2 racing New York resident. Mm -hmm. So we know that Posh, local guy, Xavier Zayat, loves this place as well. They've done a lot of laps around here. Is this time for Brandon Posh? Nope. Sean Dillon Kelly controlling. Oh, around the outside goes Richie Escalante. Yeah, Fastest he did. lap of the race, by the way, just set by Kevin Almeida our fourth place rider, so he's on the charge. So Escalante goes around the outside of Brandon Posh. Looked like they were just going down into turn one there, and Brandon committed very early to not going up the inside of Sean Dillon Kelly. And Escalante used the speed that he had to just kind of ride around the outside of him, let go of the lever, and uh, roll around him in turn one. You can see it here again. Escalante just kind of leans on Brandon. On the right-hand side, up the inside goes Richie Escalante, live pictures. So now Escalante, wasting no time, takes over the lead, but through the dirt goes Brandon Posh. He's not wanting SDK to get away, so he makes a move, and he's going to go after Richie Escalante. So a couple passes in the early stages of this race, working lap number by the of the 20 laps, we have 17 to go, so on lap number four. So SDK getting roughed up a little bit, Jason. Yeah, just a little bit. The best time to pass is if you're if you're that third rider in line, you see second go through on first. That's the best time to attack, and that's exactly what Brandon did. He got off the track there too, Greg, into the dirt. I was actually happy to see it dusty and not muddy like it was yesterday. Now they're going to come onto this front straightaway, and look at look at Xavier Zayat. He's pulled right up on the back of Sean Dillon Kelly, and he's going to make a bid for third as they go down the front straightaway. And Kevin Olmedo has dropped back after setting the fastest lap of the race. Kevin Olmedo did a 23.8, but that's just been bested by Richie Escalante, who drops it down to 23.7, only one tick off. Jay, here's the pass. Yeah, you can see it on the left side of your screen. Brandon Posh is just able to go up underneath Sean Dillon Kelly. It's a, it's a pretty big pass down there. It's a fast right-hander, and you can see in the bottom right now, it looks like those two leaders have created just a little bit of a gap. Now, keep in mind, Greg, last year we were in the 22s here, but like I said, we didn't get the, the real quality track time that these guys would have liked yesterday. So some of the setups might be a little bit off. Some of them might be a little bit different. They've had one dry, real dry morning here to get their bikes working. But so far, Escalante and Posh now are starting to gap that battle for third with Kelly and Xavier Zayat. We've seen this before from Brandon Posh, the 21. He's been able to follow. It's all about those late stages of the race. Richie Escalante's mindset is he's going to ride as hard as he needs to out front, manage the lead if he's got it, and save those tires because Richie Escalante is focused on the last four laps of the race where he likes to set down total sprint paces if he's got the tire to do it. So SDK, Sean Dillon Kelly, the third rider in the screen, M4X star Suzuki has got to figure something out at this point. He went faster in qualifying. He set pole to 123.3, but Escalante just goes quicker at a 123.2. Jason, just like you predicted, you would see lap times quicker than you saw in qualifying, and Escalante just did that. Yeah, and he's doing that on his own. Brandon's doing a great job going with him right now at a 23.3, so that's going to be even quicker for Brandon Posh, almost half a second better than what he qualified at. So that's a good, good sign for the 21 there. And uh, Escalante likes to be in this position, putting his head down. But if you keep on letting him see plus zero on his board lap after lap, it's going to let him know somebody's back there. And I think that STK is going to get back on the back of these guys as well. He'll start to figure some things out. And if these guys in front engage at all, Greg, I think that that's when you'll see the other two guys just move up on the back of them. 
JP, back to what Greg was saying just a minute ago about Richie wanting to manage his tire wear, especially for those last four laps. I spoke with him about that. He said he's very comfortable, especially mid-race. And even though the conditions were a little bit different yesterday, he did more than 20 laps on just one rear tire, which is crucial for their setup. And especially this morning, it was important to gather data for this bike. He said he's running a little softer suspension here than the Ridge since there's less elevation change. And he was really looking to make up some time in sector three. Yeah, and it's great work, Hannah, because as a rider, if you can go to bed on Friday night knowing that you've put a race distance under your belt and you're comfortable with the motorcycle, it, it really helps you on race day going into that, that morning session like he did this morning Saturday here. So when you start to look at what he's doing, not only has he really improved on probably communicating with his team as far as bike setup, but you can really tell Richie's polished himself as a rider a lot since those first three or four rounds that we saw him earlier this year. All right, so two corners to go. These riders went across the stripe, and Brandon Posh sets the fastest lap of the race, a 123-1 to a 123-2 from Richie Escalante. So he did take a tenth of a second out, but this pace is being pushed by Richie Escalante. Honos Kawasaki rider doing a great job right now, but Brandon Posh, this is the track that Posh wanted to come to and prove that he could stand on top of the podium, the 2019 British Superbike Moto3 national champion coming back to the States for this season. Yeah, and he's doing everything he can, but you can see Escalante just opened up a two tenths in that first split, and that's legitimately what two tenths look like. He only had, he had two tenths when they came across, so looking like uh, might be about a half a second gap, but we're gonna keep an eye on these lap times as they go through, because both him and Escalante have been running low 23s, and, and only just dropped Sean a little bit. Now, SDK there in third has ran his fastest first split, but look at this, Greg, Escalante in the third split goes purple on our screen, which means that's the fastest anybody's gone through there. So we'll have a look at this lap time when they come through. Greg, you mentioned that this is Posh's home track, and he's got a lot of laps here, but despite that, this is actually his only his second or third time here on the 600. He's very comfortable on the bike, though. He said really the only changes they made were to the shock to help with corner entry, and he's confident that if he can hang on to the leaders, he thinks that he has the pace and the experience to pull off a win. Yeah, well, a lot of times we've seen him by this time in the year, he's off racing someplace else or doing something else. We not usually get to see Brandon race here at his home circuit. So uh, this is good signs so far, and uh, he's just kind of going to school right now. Now it's out to, like I said, Greg, it's half a second, and the pace at the front is being pushed because Escalante and both him and Brandon Posh fastest through their first splits there, and they're just starting to eke out now on SDK, who responded nicely that last lap with a 23-4. So Shondell and Kelly looks pretty comfortable in the sort of mid 23s right now, but he just needs to find about two or three tenths to get on the back of these guys. Just watching Richie Escalante masterfully Benjamin. working this racetrack. And how about Kevin Olmedo and, and the 88 Smith. of Benjamin Smith going at it? So Olmedo had a really good start, had set a fast time early on, but now he's fallen victim to Xavier Zayat, who's up the road a piece, and now Benjamin Smith. Yep, both those guys were able to go by Almeido sometime in the, well, uh, Zayat did it very early, and uh, you can see Lucas Silva just back there a little bit. Let's see if Almeido gets a run. He gets a really good run out of the last corner, Greg, right by Benjamin Smith as they come down this front straightaway, so he's going to snag that position back. These guys, just for reference, as our leader goes 23-1, we've got Almeido and Benjamin doing 24-9, flat, so they're a couple seconds off what our leader is doing now, and you know we'll see if, if Lucas Silva can be the third member of that uh, as the race wears on. Kevin Almeida out of El Salvador. He's been in the U.S. for many, many months, staying with his uncle, and he's looking forward to the possibility of going back home here in a couple of weeks after Barber. And he's going to get home, be able to see his family and friends, and then come back to the States and finish up the season. So Kevin Almeida been in Texas just working out and just focused on racing. The Altus Motorsports team, of course, Team Hammer, who runs M4X Star Suzuki, the technical partners for Altus Motorsports, and these bikes are prepared. So what you're looking at underneath of Kevin Almeida, underneath that bodywork, the same motorcycle that Sean Dillon Kelly's ride. And they're, you know, they're very open with, uh, a lot of times they're very open with uh, giving the team the feedback that they need. So, you know, in being in conjunction with that M4 team is gonna help the Altus crew. And you can see Kevin's got his head back down here, looking at his splits, or they're even better again. So uh, he was able to get by Benjamin that last time through. Now it's going to be a matter of if you can look up the road. Xavier Zayat doing a great job in fourth uh, on the N2R6. Good to see him being able to contest a full year as well. 
88 Benjamin Smith out of Glenmore, Pennsylvania on that Northeast Cycle Outlet Racing Yamaha R6. 23-0 last time by for Richie Escalante. So he just keeps on knocking a tenth off. I saw that he had done another 23-1 in the lap prior, and he just keeps knocking a tenth of a second off here and there. And 23-0 uh, to Brandon Posh's 23-3. So it's about almost a second at the gap at the front as these two guys still continue to kind of chase each other around. Both of them this last lap, Greg, were both in the 23s. So something may are, are low, sorry, 24 sixes. So they still went a little bit quicker than they had gone the lap prior. It's just about uh, 10 and a half laps to go in this one as we continue to watch the battle for fifth place. Kevin Olmedo had gotten passed by Benjamin Smith and then it was that nice draft and pass into turn number one and Olmedo really sensed the urgency that Benjamin Smith had to put himself in a top five. We mentioned before that Kevin Olmedo is at seventh in points. He was able to, in race one of the season, which was Road America, get on the podium. Fastest lap of the race just set by Brandon Posh, by the way, up the road, a 123.009. Seven tenths of a second separate Escalante and Posh from one, two. Sean Dillon Kelly in third with Xavier Zayat in fourth. And then this battle we're watching from Olmedo and Smith. And Jason, last time by, they went 24-7. Yeah, they're both 24-7. So they're just, uh, you know, they're they're about a second, what, 1.6, 1.7 seconds off. And I could see Almeida ran just a little bit wide earlier in turn 10. And, uh, and you know, Benjamin qualified fourth here. Didn't get to see Benjamin make the drive out to the ridge. Long way for some of these teams to get out there. But uh, good to see Benjamin back here in Jersey and contesting this fifth spot. Now Jason, you look at these two motorcycles, the GSX-R600 on the 16 bike and the R6 on the 88 bike, and distinctly different motorcycles in terms of, you know, I guess you could say uh, there's a lot of electronics that comes with the stock R6 versus the GSX-R600, but they both have a distinct characteristic of handling really well. And when we talk about handling of the motorcycle, what exactly are we talking well, about? Well, you know, the thing is, is that you get with your team and you get with the suspension guys in the paddock. And, you know, with a lot of our bigger bikes, our thousands, it's, things have gone to, to such a level with electronics that even though we still have that on our 600s now, a lot of emphasis is going to be put on just making sure the bike can get around the track and make it handle as good as you can. And there's a few places that as a rider you go to different tracks and you want to get the bike handling in certain spots. Uh, you know, here at, uh, at New Jersey, the big long right handers, seven, eight, nine, are going to be places where you're spending, spending a lot of time leaned over. So we will look to see if the bikes, these two guys in general, see if their bikes are working very well in that spot. And you can see now he's just starting to get away. And here we go. Battle back up at the front. Brandon has kind of just kept it the same. He's been able to keep it to under a second on Escalante, and they're still running in the very low 23. So good stuff from Brandon's posh as far as responding back to what they're to what Escalante is doing. I think 23-0 we saw from Escalante, and then just a couple laps after that, he goes 23-0 as well. Now in the second split here, Brandon has picked up just a little bit. He lost a tenth in the first one, though, G-Dub, and he gained a tenth mm -hmm. back. So you're going to see these guys again probably in the low 23s. What do we got? We got still got eight or nine laps left. This is where Escalante can just grind out these laps, though. He just grinds it and grinds it, and uh, and you can see they've pulled well clear now of, Esca of uh, Sean Dillon Kelly, who's four and a half seconds back. He's not even in our shot almost there as he comes into this into the picture. So our pole man obviously struggling just a little bit, and these two guys still running along out front. Let's look at the lap time. See, these are 23 fours by both of those riders. Only four tenths of a second off their fastest laps each, which are 23 flats. Incredible with eight laps to go on these Dunlop tires. Brandon Posh has been pushing really hard. That sector two, that 18.7 seconds he did in sector two was the fastest sector time set of the race. Man, he looks so good through there. That left-hander in the in the chicane over there would be, I guess, uh, 3B. He looks really solid out of that left-hander to Brandon Posh there. So the second split, that might be where he's making up a little bit of that time, G-Dub. Yeah, 23 ones each in sector number one. Richie Escalante. These are, though, those laps, Jason. We talked about, Hannah talked about it as well. We're about four laps away from seeing what Richie Escalante has left in those Dunlop tires and to see if he's got even more speed and drop it possibly into the 122 range. Honos Kawasaki, Ninja ZX6R. Richie Escalante, 25 years old out of Mexico. 
focused, dialed, showed up this weekend and just had that mindset. Now keep in mind for this team, they keep coming to these racetracks for the first time with this Kawasaki. A Graves developed motorcycle, Chuck Graves, he's been around racing for a long time. He stepped away from Moto America to work on these projects. And this team taking the chance on an unproven, I think legitimately unproven Kawasaki ZX-6R. And they've done some great work with it. Chris Lessing, the crew chief, showing me various data traces from, from things that we've seen before. Very open book with the information provided for us. Yeah, and you know, the thing is, is that we've just not seen a proper team, proper rider get on this motorcycle. And uh, that said, even on that last lap, Brandon got back an extra two tenths there on, on uh, Escalante, got a little bit of traffic now coming into this play this shouldn't really hurt Brandon Brandon should hopefully be able to uh, make the pass down this next little straightaway blue flags will be flying for lap traffic so they know that there's riders coming through so no dramas for Brandon Posh uh, look like a big deal for Escalante either no nope, both guys are I'm, I, almost identical lap times right now Brandon seems to make up some see how much tighter Brandon looks like he's able to get that R6 off the turns and noticing it there through seven and then also he does it in the middle of that chicane and it's just right there in front of him I mean it's just it's got to be painstaking to just see him he's kind of uh, yo-yoing a little bit there's places where Escalante looks a little bit better and there's places where Brandon looks a little better and the thing is Posh is really having to analyze the areas that he needs to take the most risk to try to make up time as they come across the line. It, the gap was half a second. One lap before, it's now out to seven tenths of a second. Yep. And you saw the pit boards. That's the way that riders get communication. And it's up to each rider and team to see what information they want. With Richie Escalante, it's going to be the laps left, his position, and the gap to the person behind him. So Escalante is aware that there's a rider behind him. Half a second back, you can see position number one on the left part of your screen. There's five laps to go, and he had six tenths of a second over Brandon Posh. So that's the information Escalante gets when he comes across the start finish line. Same with Brandon Posh. Brandon's Anybody trying, really who's got he's that. He's trying so hard to close that gap right now is Brandon. But what happened was Escalante just went in sector number two. He said his personal best split at an 18.7 versus 18.8. And that's really what this racing is all about. When you're Brandon Posh, a tenth of a second here and a tenth of a second there is great. But Richie Escalante continues to answer. You can see in stature that Brandon Posh tall, about six feet yeah. tall. Yep. So is Richie Escalante. Yeah, they're both pretty tall guys. You can see Escalante just inching away this lap. He three tenths in the third split. So I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe Brandon's just uh, tires are starting to go off a little bit. Maybe he's just going to make a big push here with five to go now. But Brandon Posh that time through was two tenths slower. He still kept it under a second to the guy out in front. Yeah, and their gap to Sean Dillon Kelly in third spot now nine seconds with Xavier Zayat in fourth. Kevin Olmedo, fifth, Benjamin Smith in sixth, Lucas Silva, seventh, Nate Minster, Jason Aguilar, who we've seen on the podium before, and Jared Nassani. We've had six riders on the podium so far this season in Supersport, but Jason, we've only had two race winners, and that is Richie Escalante and Sean Dillon Kelly. As Brandon Posh desperately trying to hang on to Richie Escalante, and Escalante's put, broke it now, yeah, hasn't he? I mean, you can just tell just those laps, he's just grinding it out and he's able to not make any mistakes. And to be fair, he just looks so polished now compared to how he did those first two or three rounds. He just looks like he has the confidence underneath him to know what his bike is going to be like, you know, sort of 15 laps into a 20 lap race. And now with coming about four and a quarter laps to go, Escalante can just keep running these mid to low 23s we'll see what he's at this time but he's legitimately pulling away two to three tenths per sector now uh and he's broken brandon posh a little a little wide coming onto the front straightaway for the honos kawasaki rider no dramas he clicks off a 23 5 and yeah 24 3 for brandon posh so and that one he lost eight tenths of a second now here's a look at our pole sitter sean dylan kelly we talked about it at the top of the show. There was a bit of a gamble. He was indecisive. They, they were so close on what tire to go with that this might come down to that. It just might have been tire selection in terms of what's going to make it the distance because we know that Sean Dillon Kelly has the pace. 
Richie Escalante, Brandon Posh, completely eclipsed the times they were able to do in qualifying. Sean Dillon Kelly, his fastest lap of the race, a 23-4 to his 23-398, which is virtually a 23-4. The M4 X Star Suzuki rider, Sean Dillon Kelly. You know, this is this is a new challenge for him this year with Richie Escalante and Brandon Posh. And that's the Akeo come back stronger. There's obviously something that was working for him fairly well in the first five or six laps. And then, you know, we saw a big drop off for SDK. So they'll be coming back tomorrow swing in this M4 team, just like they did at the Ridge. And uh, hopefully, you know, I know SDK is not going to be happy with this being quite as far back as he is. I, you know, he'd much rather be on the back of those other two. Uh, but he's got to stay calm. He had, uh, you know, we, we saw Escalante um, have an incident at the ridge that clawed some points back. Still a lot of season left, even though it doesn't seem like it. He still has, what, does he still have seven races after this, G-Dub? So he's got plenty of time to try to make these things up. But I'm sure today STK probably felt like he could just go out and win this race. Yeah, and we saw the drama at the top of the show. And in talking with SDK this weekend, he was all about keeping his head down and just racing whatever he's got to do on the track, racing whoever is on the track and whatever shows up. So the 18-year-old from Miami, Florida, who, of course, showed up to racing. Nobody in his family raced before. He didn't have any exposure to it, just liked anything with a motor and wheels. Went to a go-kart track when he was a little tiny kid. Couldn't fit into the go-kart, so the person who ran the track said, hey, you should try these pocket bikes. And off to the races, he and his family went. It's a great story, and he's such a good young talent. And he'll uh, he'll be a guy that we're going to get to see go off and do big things, I think. Uh, and, you know, sometimes you have these little sophomore years where you they call it the sophomore jinx in a lot of other sports. And, sophomore uh, slump? Yeah, slump. I mean, so. Not much of a slump, though, for SDK. No, he's got a couple Two race wins. wins. Yep. Yeah. Seven second place finishes for Sean Dillon Kelly. As for this guy, eight wins, one second place finish, and of course, coming off of the DNF from the ridge, which wasn't his fault. He got taken out, but it definitely affected his psyche. His team really had to make sure this bike was all together. And yesterday, in those inclement conditions we talked about, Jason, what I was told by his team was that really yesterday was a shakedown just to make sure that they got everything, that they found everything that happened in that crash and everything was straight. What I'm told about Richie Escalante is he is such a sensitive rider. He can feel so much with the setup and the motorcycle that if anything on that bike is so much as a couple millimeters off, he'll come in and let them know. He can, they can, he's, he's, you know, he can tell. I mean, yeah. being a feel rider, you can definitely sense that stuff. And it was interesting yesterday, Greg, because he did a lot of the session yesterday, uh, especially the first one and even the second one. He was back there in fifth and sixth. And you could kind of tell he was in the feel out process, just get his confidence back. He knew the conditions weren't absolutely optimal. And we knew the weather was supposed to get better. And I'm glad it did because we've been here before and thought that and it hasn't. But uh, like I said this morning, it was sunny, dry, and, and then, you know, we got to see the Richie Escalante that we're seeing now. Um, and he's just kind of 3.1 seconds he's, he's out front that last lap. So he's kind of on cruise mode, 24 flat last time by. He's going to be seeing the white flag as he comes out of the last corner this time by. So Richie Escalante onto the front straightaway. White flag waving, so the final lap of this one, and it, here comes Posh, he comes across, so now it's a 3.1 second margin for Brandon Posh over Richie Escalante. Escalante, 24-5, so Jay, you know, Escalante has gotten into that mode where he's managing this lead, and Escalante, a 24-5 match by Brandon Posh, 25-1 for Sean Dillon Kelly. But what a ride, Jay. When you go back and look at the racecraft of Richie Escalante, that's going to be a huge part of the story for this 2020 season. Well, we're not seeing mistakes anymore. There were times during this season when you and I are calling these races and we see mistakes where he starts to gap people, makes a small mistake and lets them close back in or he gets passed or whatever. And we're just not seeing that anymore. And that's a scary sight for all, everybody else that he's racing against. He's riding fairly mistake free. I mean, completely mistake free, really, even in this race. And uh, he knows when to be aggressive and he knows when he's going to follow and he follows and he kind of sizes up his competition. And uh, this race here is as faultless as I've seen him run all season long and a good way to bounce back from that accident at the Ridge. Yeah, and no matter what you say about engine displacement and all the drama that we've seen, Richie Escalante's racecraft continues to get better and better 
A little bit of movement out of the front end of the Kawasaki ZX6R. No dramas for Richie Escalante. Onto the front straightaway head bobbin, and he'll take victory in race number one at New Jersey Motorsports Park. Great run from Brandon Posh as well. 3.4 seconds back, but uh, that team's going to go to work tonight as well as this team, this M4. You can see STK not happy, shaking his head as he comes across the line, hearing he made, made a little tire swap there before the start of that race, and it uh, didn't work out maybe for him. But here we go, the run to the line for fourth or fifth place now. Almeida's going to just barely close out Benjamin Smith, and a great run. We didn't get to see him very much, but Xavier Zayat finishes fourth, Greg, in that race. Good result for him. Outstanding for Xavier Zayat, our eighth, eighth in the points rider. His best finish so far this season. He ties that, 13 points. He will collect Xavier Zayat for another fourth place finish, which by the way, he had out at the ridge in race number two, did Zayat. So we could see Xavier Zayat all of a sudden starting to break out in super sport. But Richie Escalante, ninth win of the season. And what can you say, Jason? I mean, the fastest lap of the race is going to be credited to Brandon Posh at a 123.009. And Richie Escalante's fastest lap of the race, a 123.097. Really close, you know. And uh, the thing is, is it's a, it, we talk about it. It's the sustainability to be able to run lap times consistently lap after lap. Brandon started to go back probably about five or six laps from the end. So maybe they can make a change tomorrow to where hopefully – He's going to be able to sustain that pace. This guy's getting closer and closer to a win. And today, to me, he ends at 3.4 back. I feel like it was closer than that. Um, they just got to find something for him there the last five, six laps. Uh, and hopefully, and you can see he's got a great tribute helmet too this weekend. We forgot to talk about that, but he's got that 911 helmet. Yeah, definitely. And Jason, when you race, race Richie Escalante right now, Brandon Posh did, I think, the best job he can. You got to put pressure on Escalante out front. Not necessarily to force Richie into a mistake because he doesn't look like that guy, but to get him out of his comfort zone in terms of his tire management. So Brandon Posh and his team are going to go back tonight and say, okay, where do we need to improve with about five laps to go in exactly. this one? Where yep. did we have that performance drop off, and how can we fix it for tomorrow? Yeah. For Richie Escalante, happy especially. He'll be doing the same thing. The yeah, oh yeah, exactly. The work <laughs> be, never stops. Yeah, it never stops. They're going to be wanting to get into those 22s tomorrow. That's where we saw this race at last year in the 22s. So, again, these guys are a couple sessions behind from where they would have been, and that's really the reason I think that we haven't seen those times. And I think that tomorrow, if all things stay the same weather-wise and such, we'll see these guys dip into those 22s tomorrow. Brandon Posh, local hero in victory lane already. As SDK makes his way around, we're going to hear from Escalante and find out how his race went. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back to New Jersey Motorsports Park in a moment. Richie Escalante getting off the podium after enjoying celebrations for his victory after race two at the Ridge where he was unable to finish the race due to an on-track incident. Richie Escalante gets right back on track. Jason, why don't we take a look at race one and how this whole thing unfolded because Escalante said it wasn't drama free for him. No, it wasn't. As you can see here, he gets off the line a little bit behind Brandon Posh, but SDK got a great start. Did kind of what I thought he was going to do. Put his head down. Looked like he had some pace on these guys in the opening laps. And you can see Brandon Posh slots himself into second in between him and uh, between SDK and Escalante as the race wore on. Escalante ends up going around the outside of Brandon Posh in turn one, which would actually be the race for the front. Brandon Posh, after Escalante attacked Sean Dillon Kelly in turn five, Brandon Posh does the business and goes right up underneath him in turn six. Those two guys would start to break away from the battle for third. And in the beginning, it was a battle because Zayat was right up the back of Sean Dillon Kelly. Kevin Olmedo and Benjamin Smith would go to the line in their battle to, for that top five spot, with it, which eventually would go to Olmedo. But on the last lap, this guy cruises along to a 3.4 second win and some work to do tomorrow, he says. Yeah, definitely for Richie Escalante. Well, the, the big news, of course, is in the championship, you know, like for Sean Dillon Kelly, Jason, I think you look at this one and you'll have to say that he was able to maintain that third place finish and only lose nine. We had 30 coming in here. So Brandon Posh gains a little bit on Sean Dillon Kelly in that one. But the difference in that is only four points. So as we look ahead with the amount of races that we have left, it's still possible. 
you know, for Sean Dillon Kelly to do something, but they've really got to figure out how to race up Richie Escalante. And guess what? They're going to have another go at it tomorrow right here from New Jersey Motorsports Park. We're going to have Super Sport race number two. There's going to be a lot of work done by everybody tonight to close the gap to Richie Escalante. That'll do it for us for now. For Hannah Lopa and Jason Pridmore, I'm Greg White. Thanks so much for joining us. Moto America Super Sport Race 1 from New Jersey Motorsports Park. We'll see you tomorrow. Roger.